three. Hello. Hello. I'm Kate. And this is Ella. And we are going to uh, read Chrysanthemum by Kevin Henkes. Kevin Henkes. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father. And she was. She was absolutely perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself in fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Mm -hmm. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect and then she started school. On the first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile and she ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower, Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half of as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, said Victoria as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup. Mine! Yours too! And an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper and she walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, a chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. 
Neither can I, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. I know, I'm sad for her too. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. Are you sad for Chrysanthemum? Yeah, me too. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals, and Victoria picked her and plucked her leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of Chrysanthemum's life. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest rope possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher, and her voice was like something out of a dream as everything else was about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indesirable wonder. Oh my goodness, they went out of their way to make a nice impression. Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales and then she assigned roles for the class musicale. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rita was chosen as a spiffy butterfly princess. Joe was chosen as an all important pixie messenger and Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. A daisy. A daisy. It's a different type of flower. Chrysanthemum's a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy. Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous? asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. My name is long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium, Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering chrysanthemum as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. <gasps> Yay! Rita, Joe, and Victoria looked at Chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. And my name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. Epilogue. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria only made one mistake. She completely forgot her fairy lines as the dainty fairy queen. Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a very healthy baby girl, and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. One of our favorite books, and we want to remind you to be practicing the Faith Five as you read, share, talk, pray, and bless uh, each other. And so I'm going to give Aria her blessing. Child of God, you're marked with the cross of Christ. You are seen. You are heard. You are loved. <laughs> Can I have my blessing?
Thank you. Bye. Bye.